went to a crazy store over here in Niagara Falls. You know, normally something like this is like 10 bucks. I'm not sure what I got into, but check this out. The price per kilo is $55.90. <laughs> and this is only 332 grams, so basically less than a pound. And I paid 20 bucks. 20 bucks. Son of a gun. But this is the latest update from the captain, Captain Sergey News. So this thing goes in here. So we're gonna have salmon for dinner. But yeah, with, when it's 10 bucks, it's okay. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's cheaper than at the restaurant. But when it's prices like this, it doesn't make much sense. But I don't know, this was some kind of a crazy store. I didn't use them before. Something called Comet Souls. Comiso's uh, grocery store or something. I should have just went to, you know, I usually here in Canada use Zares or even Walmart or what's the other one? Soy. But you know, they're cheaper. Like a salmon like that should be 10 bucks. But I went, you know, it's misleading, right? When you look at the sticker, it says four bucks, five bucks. But it doesn't tell you that. I think this one was like. I think I thought it was five, five bucks, but we don't we don't realize that that's per hundred grams, right? And so this was over three hundred grams. Anyway, don't get me started. But uh, what's happening is that I'm getting ready, getting ready to to uh, hit the road. So I finally finished my books for January. I never was so busy in January, so with these, uh, I, I did three trips, made a bunch of money, but also spent a bunch of money. Like I never, I never. Uh, usually, it's like three thousand bucks Canadian on fuel. Okay, in winter can be forty five hundred, maybe five thousand. This January, I spent nine thousand Canadian on fuel. So it doesn't make much sense to haul uh, heavy stuff. Uh, over long distances when it's when it's cold because your fuel economy just goes you know down and, and especially when it's Canada where fuel is way more expensive than in the States so yeah for now I'm gonna stay close until it gets warm I'm gonna stay closer and my truck is in the shop uh, they called me yesterday because they they said when I called them on the day before, they said, no, it's not in the shop yet. We ordered the gasket for the hood, but it's not in. He it's not here yet. But then finally, the yesterday, they called me. They said, okay, it's in the shop. We just finished uh, testing your batteries, and pretty much all batteries are bad. And I said, what do you mean? And they said, well, when they did the testing with the discharge, they said they, they were all discharging way too fast. And that's exactly the problem that uh, you know I've been complaining about, right? Like when I'm driving, when I'm starting the truck, I don't, I, I didn't have a problem. But as soon as I shut off the truck, even though I've been driving all day, then three, four hours later, if I have a bunk heater on, I get the you know the notice on the dash saying that you know low voltage disconnect, meaning that my battery is going below 12 volts. And it's good that I have that protection because otherwise, you know, if it didn't tell me that, I would keep using the bunk heater and then I would end up with a dead battery in the morning, right? So it's a good thing that my truck has that. And so the batteries are bad. I asked him about uh, voltage regulator. It turns out on these big engines, it's part of the alternator. And so there's nothing wrong with that one. I said, did you test it? The guy says, no, because it's not a separate unit. So it turns out on a small, like that Honda, right? That's where I learned that term, low voltage disconnect. Because if that thing doesn't work properly, it's not gonna charge the batteries. But it turns out my batteries were charging, uh, and they were working, right? Like when I'm driving, I see, you know, nice voltage, like 14 volts, you know, 14.2. But as soon as I stop the engine, that's it, they So that was, so it was a specific problem with the batteries. And my batteries are 900 something, uh, whereas the basic ones are 700, you know, that cranking power. I asked him if I can get maybe um, 
uh, stronger batteries, you know, for the cold weather. And they said the next uh, would be 1100, but they don't recommend it. They don't recommend them because they said uh, they don't last as long. And so I decided to stick to what my truck has since these are not, uh, they're, they're better than basic. These are 900 CC. And so that's what I'm, I'm getting. I have no idea. I like, I'm here till Friday anyway, so I don't want to bother them. So I'm leaving Friday morning and I'm driving back. And then I talked to my friend Alan from Keswick. So I have those gauges, right? So this Saturday, that'll be probably the next video. This Saturday we're meeting in my yard in Cambridge where we're gonna attempt to install these uh, uh, air gauges on each, uh, in each spot so I can, I can do the readings. You know, we'll install one on the tandem uh, one on each flip so I think I bought five yeah and I hope the weather um, the weather will be not as bad because you see now it's it's it it seemed like sunny but it's very windy uh, I don't know if you can see the flag over there Canadian flag blowing in the wind flying in the wind and it's chilly I think it's probably like plus two or something Celsius but at least this is okay as long as it's not below zero not freezing so then we're meeting with alan so to install these uh gauges and so those are because i already i don't need the truck to do this right because my trailer is in my yard and uh, alan has all the tools because yeah all my tools my my own tools are in the truck and but i don't have that many anyway and he has all these specialized tools and we need to find these uh you know that t t little thing that we're gonna hook up basically take apart the hose from the airbag and then install this t thing in there and put the gauge like vertical and then plug in the air hose in here i don't think he has enough of these uh, t's so we'll try to find them locally somewhere here at the, at the, at the truck dealer and Saturday, most of them are open. And so I looked at a couple of loads on the load board. And there's one in the States coming back to US. I'm interested in, but the price is uh, still low. So I'm waiting for the price to go up. Since uh, chances are I'm gonna stay, I'm gonna stay home till Monday. So now I'm, I'll, tomorrow I'll focus my attention on uh, finding a load probably for Monday. And in other news, uh, on Saturday, I drove to Burlington, right? And I dropped off my accordion for repairs. And I saw this guy was limping. So I knew he had some kind of issue with his hip. And I think he's a bit older than me. And I asked him, do you think you'll, you'll have time to fix my accordion by Friday, like this Friday? Because I said, I might leave on a trip. And he said, oh yeah, for sure. Okay, and so then uh, Sunday, I, of course, I don't hear from him. It's, it's the, the weekend, then Monday is the family day here in Canada. It's a holiday. And I, I have no, nothing, no communication from him. And so Tuesday, I sent him an email. I said, hey, did you have a chance to look at my accordion? But, you know, and the guy writes back, oh, unfortunately, I'm at the hospital with a broken hip. He says, uh, if you need the accordion, you can, you can get it next week, which is like next week. Or if you, if you can wait, I can look at it after two weeks and, and fix it. And I said, man, that's my only accordion. You know, I wish you would have told me that you were going for an operation. Like, I don't understand what happened. Like, he was limping. And then he says, uh, yeah, I was scheduled for an operation in the beginning of February, and then it got canceled, but, and I quote, now we have no choice. Like, I understand the guy has uh, problems, right? But why would you take my accordion if you, if you going into a hospital? You know, like this is my only instrument. I have to keep playing it. Otherwise I'm gonna lose all the skills. 
and that's another reason why I don't want to go too far because I gotta pick up this accordion it's sitting somewhere there he has no relatives nobody can open the door and give me the accordion it's like funny the guy takes the instrument uh, promises me it'll be ready by this Friday and, he, and then he writes me from a hospital bed that he's uh, in the hospital but I don't think he broken it like he was scheduled for the operation so I think he already had a broken hip or something I don't know how he was walking around but I wish he would have told me right then I wouldn't bother him with the accordion I drove 75 kilometers to Burlington and then 75 back which is almost 100 miles just to get my accordion to his shop and the guy says I'm in the hospital with a broken hip and uh, so interesting I'm not sure what what happened with my accordion technician maybe there was an accident he fell down again but he was already limping I know he said he had an issue with his leg and again he says he was scheduled for the operation right so he knew it was gonna happen sooner or later anyway a bit disappointing but no no word yet on my Italian uh, accordion but this one I, w I wanted you know to get it fixed and so I can keep practicing now I'm gonna forget everything because two weeks it's a long time you know with no no playing anyway uh, and I I cancel my Netflix Netflix is keeps uh, rising prices and the content is extremely limited especially in Canada I already watched pretty much all the movies so I went in I canceled I canceled Netflix because I, I, I really I, I, I've been keeping my eye on the Reacher you know series on Amazon I, I read pretty much all the books by Lee Child I love the guy and so this movie is based on uh, one of his books you know and so I signed up uh, for uh, uh, for a trial 30 days is free and after that after that it's like 750 a month Canadian and you not only get the Amazon Prime video but you get uh, prime shipping which is much faster right and I think you get um, you can download music or audiobooks or stuff like that so for 750 you're getting a lot and so yesterday I spent whole day lying in bed and I watched the entire eight episodes of Reacher I love that that's like season one they only have season one so eight episodes and each episode was I think like 50 55 minutes so like I said I spent probably I don't know, eight hours watching that movie so Amazon Prime seems to be the you know the thing so bye bye Netflix hello Amazon all right so that's the update so Wednesday uh, February 23rd and by the way in Russia it's a big holiday used to be it was uh, Dien Sovietsky Army Soviet Army Day and then they changed that of course when the Soviet Union fell apart they changed that to Dien Zashitnik Atechistva like the Motherland's Defenders Day so basically it's like Army Day right if you were in the army that's when everybody would congratulate it's kind of like uh, you know like there's uh, Women's Day and then there's husband's day something like that right so this was kind of like that so all men had to go to the army in Russia and so on this day uh, February 23rd uh, it was kind of like all women congratulating you know their husbands and sons and stuff like that and my mom sent me a message through whatsapp hey Sergey congratulations da -da -da. and I send an email to my brother but with all this craziness happening over there right like between Russia and Ukraine uh, it's just nuts so and again I have nothing to do with with Russia since 1997 so the only connection is my brother and my mother I don't watch their TV I don't read their newspapers you know I'm Canadian so so there you have it so thanks for watching uh, we'll post an update uh, probably Saturday when we're doing that uh, with Alan we're doing the install of the uh, air gauges stay safe bye